Wait, can you dig your, yeah, in that spot again? No, 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 no. Wait, oh, this, like, spot down here? Um, higher up? Right here. Oh, that's down there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Ah! <laughs> How's that feel? It hurts so good. <laughs> Ow! Oh. oh! Oh! I think you hit a nerve. Oh, no. Ow, Sophie's concerned. Sophie, are you worried? Is it? It's Mom, okay. Mom, we actually have two Sophies in frame right now. Sophie alive, and then Sophie on my Wait, can you, you can't use that word. <laughs> Sophie on my chest. Yo, Ellie we, Whale. We got this from Perky Prince. They sent us a bunch of Sophie stuff. Anything Sophie makes me happy, so. Yes, I got a Sophie sweatshirt, a Sophie tote bag, all the Sophie stuff. Give me a kiss. You should kiss. Wait, you gave her a kiss? No, me a kiss. She didn't. Oh, that's a kiss. Yeah, she actually gave you a kiss. She did not give me a kiss. She that just... was more than I expected. <laughs> She just breathed her hot breath in my face. <sighs> that's your kiss. <sighs> oh, that was... I know. Let me brush your teeth. Oh, that's rude. I'm just, just kidding. I'm kidding. I mean, I did. No, I did before we went down to talk to the lady. <laughs> Why does your voice get so high right now? I don't know. All right, Sophie, go lay down. Jeez. Sophie. <laughs> She's really trying to steal the show today. She really is. I, like, literally pet her for, like, 30 <laughs> minutes before we started filming, and, like, it's not enough. <laughs> It's never right. enough for her. All right, can you come lay down so we can go? Film? lay down. Right here, lay down. We'll pet you after, I promise. Lay down. Good Call girl. That. She did not want to. She, was, she did not. No, she was just staring at us. All right, so today we're gonna address some assumptions about our relationship. It's always interesting asking people what assumptions they have because I mean, we always get such mixed responses. Mm -hmm. And I think the longer our relationship lasts, now it's, I mean, we're, it's like five years. About, going on five years. Going on five years. I think the assumptions change over time too. Yeah. There aren't as many assumptions questioning our relationship just because like we've been together for so long, people are like, okay, they're actually together. It's pretty obvious. Like this would be a long lasting fake relationship. That's for yeah. sure. It would be exhausting. Obviously. Yeah. I, I mean, moving all the way to California with my fake husband, <laughs> That'd be a lot. That, that's commitment. No, nah, I'd rather stay with family. <laughs> <I know. laughs> so yeah, we wanted to address some assumptions. I will preface this though by saying like, these assumptions don't bother us. Like, we don't care. I know we don't have to prove ourselves to anyone and we right. realize that, but it's just kind right. of fun to like read them and just kind of like laugh or be like, oh, they were so spot on with that assumption. Yeah, some, some of them are right. Yeah. So we'll, we'll, we'll go through all of them and see, yes. see what we get. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Charisma posted on her Instagram page, at Happily Charisma, uh, to get some responses. Mm -hmm. So we haven't seen any of these, so we're just gonna read them blindly. We're only gonna read like the good ones. I'm sure there's some that are like, I don't have an assumption. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> so I assume you both are happy. Yeah. Ding, ding, ding. No, that's a good, good job. <laughs> that's a good assumption. I, I think we're just genuinely happy. Yeah, especially mm -hmm. moving here. I think we've been happier. Yeah, I feel like we're in our happy place. Yeah, I think this is the happiest we've been. Mind you, we were happy at home. Of course. For sure. Yeah, family brings us much joy. Yes. The here, the I mean, the weather legitimately makes me happier. Mm -hmm. Things are going well business-wise, our mm -hmm. relationship's going well, mm -hmm. and like our future feels so exciting. So yeah, mm -hmm. I'm very happy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> you seem so in harmony with each other, like you rarely have arguments or talk everything out. Okay, I think we're in harmony. Yes. I agree with that. But this says like you rarely have arguments. I think it's normal. I think it's normal too. Like I wouldn't, I wouldn't say, oh my gosh, we like, oh my gosh, we argue like once a year. No, <laughs> like it's, it's more than that. It's more often than that, especially like when there's a lot going on in our lives too. Right. And we're stressed out. Like I think when we're stressed, we can have more arguments yeah. than when we're not stressed. It definitely coincides with like how busy we are. It does. I think, cause that just wears on you after time and then you start getting chippy, you know? And moody. Right. Right. But I think they're like little, sorry. I think they're like little like bickering. It's more like bickering. It's like getting annoyed with each other. Like, <laughs> yeah. little, like momentary yeah. kind of frustration. The last part I think is right. I think we do end up talking everything out. Yes. Sometimes it like takes a little while to come around and like cool off or whatever, but we always 
have a good conversation about it, express ourselves. Yeah. We feel comfortable expressing ourselves and our emotions to each other. And that in that way we are, yes, in harmony, even though we argue sometimes. Yeah, well, I, th I just think it's normal. Oh, we have a rule to not go to bed upset. Yes. And so like sometimes like, like maybe- We've come we, close. We but. have come close. Like I'll, maybe I'm like holding on a grudge longer than I should. And I'm just like in bed, like on my side, like, oh, I don't <laughs> want to talk to you. And then he's like reaching over. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's Here's my Come, come cuddle with me, Please. come cuddle with me. What's wrong? Let's yeah. talk about it. I can put myself in a position where Cole literally can't physically move me. <laughs> and so when I do that, I honestly feel terrible. And I'm like, okay, this isn't fair because if he could, he would grab me right now and pull me into him. Mm -hmm. And so after like five minutes, I'm like, okay, this isn't unfair. Let me just go and cuddle and do what he wants, but he just can't do. And then we talk. And then we talk, yeah. And then we figure it out. Yeah. And then we can snuggle in harmony again. In harmony again. <laughs> you guys prefer summer to winter months. 100%. Yep. Great assumption. Absolutely. <laughs> Great assumption. <laughs> Why do you think we're here? <laughs> All right, Chris wants me to choose one. Hi there, I assume that Cole is the more affectionate spouse in the marriage. Yeah. You think so? Uh, well, it depends, like physical affection, yeah. I do like my physical touch. Like that's Cole's love language. And so <laughs> that's Cole's love language. So yeah. I think he is absolutely more physically affectionate than I am, but I'm more affectionate with my words. Yeah, I would say that too. But I think you're, I think you're like underselling how often you give me physical love too. Yeah. I mean, you woke me up with a kiss this morning. I always like pull up with a kiss. Yeah, you do that all the time. <laughs> I think that's super affectionate and I love that. Yeah. So I don't know. I mean, I'm always trying to touch you, but I think that causes some of the arguments we talked about earlier. So. Yes, that, it, that can cause a little argument because Cole's super affectionate and I just grew up and I wasn't always affectionate. So sometimes too much like touchy, touchy like bothers me. And so like I'm trying to like balance it out because I know that's what Cole loves, but also at the same time too much for me is overwhelming. Right. <laughs> Um, but I also think people have that perception because I don't show much affection on screen. But as soon as the camera's off, like I'm all over Cole. Like I literally would just like sit on his lap and twerk on him. Like that's yeah, me. It's great. She's so good at twerking. <laughs> But like, I will never do that on camera. So our relationship yeah. is like more affectionate when the camera is not rolling. Just cause like I'm weird with PDA and that's, I've always been that way. Yeah, but I'll touch her whenever, wherever. You will, <sighs> it's kind of, and that's when I get frustrated. Cause I'm like, babe, we're in public. Like don't touch my butt. Like that's weird. It's like, well, don't have a big butt. Uh, it's not my fault. Big butt, yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> I assume that it will be easy for Cole to book roles given he's auditioning for disabled characters. Interesting assumption. Hmm. Very good, very good assumption because I think that's a good thing for us to yeah. talk about. It's like I, I agree and I disagree. Mm -hmm. And I'll explain why. I agree because there is a push for authentic casting, which mm -hmm. means that if there's a wheelchair user in the character, they want a wheelchair user to play that character. Mm -hmm. And so I'm given opportunities because not everybody's a wheelchair user. And that's a good thing. And because of that, I feel like I've had a really good record of call, like getting callbacks on auditions. It's almost like 50% for me, which is like, I'm really proud of that because a lot of people hardly ever get callbacks. Mm -hmm. And part of that might be because I'm going for wheelchair user roles. Mm -hmm. That being said, it's also harder because there aren't that many roles like that. Mm -hmm. There are a million roles out there for tall, muscular, athletic men. I see that all the time as I'm going through like breakdowns. So many of those roles. So I have a much more limited number of roles I can audition for, mm -hmm. but a lot of them are more suited for me. Like I'm like really well suited for them. So yeah. in a sense, it's like yes and no. Yeah, and just because the role is disabled, unfortunately, doesn't mean that they're gonna cast a disabled actor. That's true. And it'll happen. It, we've only been here going on eight months. It takes people years. It'll happen. Yeah, so you can assume it's gonna happen. Yeah, <laughs> sooner or later. Sooner or later. I assume Cole lost friends due to his injury. Hmm, yeah, that's a fair assumption. 
I think that happens often with people who have spinal cord injuries. Um, mm. I think friendships can be hard to maintain. Yeah, they can be. Because you build friendships based off people who are alike, who do similar things as you. You know, this is something we actually addressed in our last video. Is like when you have a spinal cord injury, in a lot of ways, that person you were before your injury is kind of gone. I mean, you're not going to be able to be that same person again. Yeah. And that was especially... And the case for me, because I mean, I played lacrosse, I went out all the time, I was like, that was my thing. And after my injury, I couldn't do that. So I didn't hang out with those people as much. And all my friends who I hung out with, like in my social circles, who were going to this place and that place, and they were all inaccessible, couldn't really spend time with them anymore. So all of a sudden, like, even though you're still like, quote, friends, like you'd have a good conversation and hang out with someone in an accessible place. You don't see them as much because they're going and doing all these things that you can't really do that you used to do before. Yeah. It's this weird thing. It's like, you're not really like losing a friend, but you just slowly kind of fade out of each other's lives. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you're young at that age, friends come and yeah, go. People come and go. Like friendships aren't as solid as they are now as adults, mm -hmm. I feel like. So yeah, that's a fair assumption. Yeah. Really fair. You want to do this one? Oh, that's a good one. I read it. Okay. This assumption, Cole gets really frustrated when he drops things. Absolutely. Yes. It's so frustrating, man, mm -hmm. to like get real deep about this. That's actually one of the like things that usually starts building up like resentment in me and like my disability and stuff is when like I just drop things and it takes me five minutes to pick it up and I'm spasming, which is just making it harder. I'm almost falling over. I'm getting lightheaded from the exertion of like bending over to try to reach this. My hand just won't do what I want it to do. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's so frustrating. And then I'm just like, I hate changes. I go. Yeah. And then I eventually get it or I'm just like, so if you pick it up and yeah. then she helps me. <laughs> yeah, Cole doesn't also, you don't like when I um, step in to help. I've well, done that before and it like made you so upset. And I was like, my bad, I, just, I didn't realize it. I just well, put it back on the floor. <laughs> well, I wasn't upset with you. I was upset because I was frustrated with doing it. And, I, and then you came in, I was like, no, yeah. I'm gonna do it. I know. Don't let me do it. Because yeah. at some point, even though I'm frustrated, it becomes a point of pride. It's like, I'm going to get this done. <laughs> I'm gonna pick this freaking ball up off the ground. Yeah. Yeah, but man. Man, is it frustrating. Mm -hmm. oh. mm -hmm. So that was, that was a really accurate that's, assumption. Yep, yeah, that's a good assumption. <laughs> so this is an interesting assumption. Cole still holds back on his frustrations not to upset charisma. Do you? What's, what kind of, what's the answer? Well, I think I keep a close guard on my frustrations because I don't want to hate my existence. So it's more for you than for me. Yeah. But also, as your partner, I want you to like be happy with me. And if I'm constantly complaining to you about my frustrations, I feel like that's only gonna make you less happy. Yeah. Too. Like I understand communicating emotions, and I do that. Mm -hmm. But I'm not gonna like all day long, you know, share every frustration I have. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think you're talking about frustrations with yourself. I think she's saying like frustrations with me. Oh, with you? Yeah. Like you don't uh, share when you're frustrated with me because you don't want to upset me. That was the case for a while. Yeah. I think that was the case for a good while. For both of us, I yeah. think. Yeah. Because I so desperately wanted you and I didn't want you to have any reason not to want me. Mm -hmm. um, and if I was complaining about my frustrations with you, I thought, you know, that might be a reason. But now I'm more of the mind that like if I want to make this a lifelong relationship, which mm -hmm. is what I want. Mm -hmm. It's not going to work if I have all these hidden frustrations that just build resentment. Yeah. Yeah. We, we communicate very openly. I think I had the same struggle too at the beginning, like especially with Cole's disability and like helping him and being his caregiver. I think a while for a while, I just wouldn't like say if things were bothering me, but then it would get bottled up and then I'll be like cranky and mm -hmm. like stressed out. And so now I'm just like, Hey, like I, I need you to work on being more independent in this area because it's really frustrating me and mm -hmm. I need help. And so I think we're both really good at like communicating our feelings. Yeah. We have to, you have yeah. to, if you're going to be a caregiver, like for a spouse or anyone, you have to communicate your feelings. Mm -hmm. And Cole has to communicate his feelings for me because I'm caring for him. I need to make sure his needs are met. And if I'm not doing something right, he, he needs to communicate. Yeah. That to I, me. I totally agree. And I was about to say, I, if we hadn't started doing that, if we hadn't started sharing our frustrations, I think this would have fallen apart a long time ago. Oh, for sure. Yeah. For sure, it would have been it would have been really hard. Yeah. So communication yeah. saved our relationship. Yeah. When we at first thought, you know, not communicating certain things is what was saving our relationship. Weird little 
twist of perspective there yeah. that made all the difference. No, it really did. Mm -hmm. This is an assumption that I knew was coming. It just took forever for someone to ask it because I think people are nervous. <laughs> <laughs> My assumption is about your intimate life. I assume you guys don't enjoy it that much. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> wrong. <laughs> um, we are very happy. Yeah. And trying for babies is really fun. <laughs> Next. <laughs> I don't know what face you're making. What? I'm gonna watch this back and be like, oh my god. I'm Who just, did I marry? <laughs> I'm just in my head. Okay. All right. You know next. I mean? Next. <laughs> Wait, this one. Well, that's a good one. I assume you took care of Cole before dating him. No. No. Cole literally wouldn't let me do anything for a mm. year. Well, you did some stuff before a year. A year was like the last big thing that you needed to learn to do for us to have like all the freedom. Yeah. So Cole, at the beginning, for months, Cole would only let me do his ICs. That's all I ever did. And he wanted our relationship to be as like, just focus on our relationship as mm -hmm. possible and not the caregiving. Um, I would ask, but he, Cole, you didn't feel comfortable. Yeah, no, I didn't. I wanted our relationship to be about us and mm -hmm. I didn't want you to ever think that I was just with you because you were helping me do things. Yeah. Looking back in hindsight, I'm frustrated with myself for not like learning how to do ICs earlier. So I could have just done that on my own. I wouldn't even have to ask you for help. I didn't want that. So you definitely did not take care of me. But what's interesting about that is, I mean, that's very clearly about like the caregiving role and disability. One assumption we see a lot is that she started dating me or she wanted me because of my disability check. <laughs> I know. It's hilarious. I don't think it's just like weird perception that people have where like, like these disability checks are like huge fat checks. Mm -hmm. No, I'll tell you, I was getting 500 bucks a month. Mm -hmm. That's all I was earning. So mm -hmm. she was making like way more, triple like three, triple, three times, triple? I don't know. way more money than I was when we met, but it's just weird to me that people think that, Oh, disability checks are fat. And like, he's with them for the money. It's like, you think everybody on disability is getting paid a ton of money. Most people on disability are only getting paid money because they're below the poverty line. Mm -hmm. Literally you have to be below the poverty line to be getting these, these checks. Yeah. It, there's a misconception and like, we still get those comments. Like I'm only with Cole for the check and it's like, well now, now Cole doesn't I don't get, even get a check. He doesn't we got off of that because thankfully, you know, we I'm, we're in a better position and he yeah. doesn't need it. But like there's just a, a misconception about disability mm -hmm. and like the disability check and you have to literally be single and poor and have nothing in your name to even qualify. Yeah. And it's sad. It's really sad that that's Sucks. what it has to be. It's and not everyone is fortunate like us where they could get off of it and you know have a a different job because maybe working working could be hard for them yeah so she was not my caregiver before mm -hmm. and she definitely didn't do it for the money <laughs> that would have been a weird choice yeah <laughs> um, but anyway yeah the, the assumptions are always fun to go through mm -hmm. you never know what people are going to come up with hopefully this addressed some some interesting questions that y'all had yeah hopefully <laughs> it answers some of your sub assumptions yes thanks for watching yes and don't forget to like comment share subscribe and stay, stay positive, positive. Bye. Mm -hmm.